and happy reunion. Srimad Bhagavad Gita. You know, there is one God. Everybody, all the faith, they profess that, that there is one God. So when God speaks, He speaks to the entire mind, mankind. All these faiths, they are man-made. We made. Islam was not there. Christianity was not there. So the importance of Bhagavad Gita is the universal applicability. When God says, talk to the man, he is talking to the entire populace. So there is no sectarian, there is no region, religion, language, faith, color, creed, does not matter. It is for the entire populace. So that is the beauty of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. If you Google this Bhagavad Gita, you will see the song of God. God sings, because it's a poetry. Gita means poetry. So God is talking to the man. So it's a dialogue between the Almighty and the man, us. They have given the name Arjuna and Lord Krishna, but it is the God. You can give any name or all the name or no name, does not matter. It's a dialogue between the Almighty, the Creator who created this phenomenal creation, and the man, all us. There is one globe. And all these countries, they are man-made. India used to be one till 1947. Then it became three countries. Who made it? Us. God has nothing to do with that. So anything and everything relating to Sri Bhagavad Gita belongs to the globe. And it is not the monopoly of Hinduism. It is for, if you say Bhagavad Gita belongs to Hindus, then you are putting the phenomenal creative thoughts in a box. And today's wisdom, the corporate wisdom is that think out of the box. Because the corporate world has become global. If you don't compete globally, you are doomed. So spiritually speaking, the same thought is applicable in spirituality. Until and unless we become out of the box, the windows of our minds will open. And fresh air and the sunlight from every window will peep in. And you are the beneficiary. But if you close the windows of the mind, close the windows of the room, you are deprived of the phenomenal energy, the sunlight, the source of all our existence. So I'm sharing with you this with utmost humility that try to understand the importance of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. There's no other philosophy in the entire world which processes this. They are sectarian. They give with one faith, do or die. But Bhagavad Gita gives you choices, do's and don'ts. And if you don't want to do this, do this. If you don't want to do this, do this. Depending upon the constitutional setup of our bodies, because we have different bodies, our emotions are different. And Whatever suits you the best according to your own constitutional setup of your body, you can pick up any choice. Bhagavad Gita is a science of choices. Choices. In chapter 12 of Sri Bhagavad Gita, there are 26 choices. Believe it or not. Pick up any. And I am not going into the depth yet, but I am giving you the preview. What is Bhagavad Gita? Why, why it is so important? So, but luckily, this phenomenal 
happening happened in India. So we are the beneficiary. Kurukshetra was in India. Battle was fought in India. Lord Krishna was in India. Arjuna was in India. These are the historical perspectives. Nobody can deny it. Archaeologically speaking, all those things are still there. All those names which were used in this epic of Mahabharata, they are still there. So, geographically, historically, they are there. So, we are the beneficiary. So, since we are the eyewitness, we may not be the eyewitness, but our forefathers, thousands and thousands of years before, they are the eyewitness. It happened. So, that being said, it is our prime responsibility as a parent, as a parent, there's no kid sitting here, to understand it and digest this information and then transplant the seed of this wisdom in the younger generations. It can happen only un unless I understand that. I understand. So I have to digest this information. People allege that uh, it is in Sanskrit. Come on. You have learned 36 languages of the IT in programming. Very difficult languages. If you can master those languages and start writing programs, Sanskrit is an easy language. Especially Sanskrit used in Srimad Bhagavad Gita. That is the easiest Sanskrit. In Vedic culture, the mantras are very difficult even to pronounce. But Bhagavad Gita, the easiest, easiest. So invest some resources, some time to try to memorize few selected verses of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Latest research, broad based research, it certifies that reciting selective divine mantras increases the size of your brain and your cognitive ability. These are not made up things. The modern mind, the modern research, it is authenticating this information. So, reflect back. Take a Bhagavad Gita in your briefcase when you commute or at the before you go to bed, select one or two verses and try to digest it. It is the information, inside information. And I have been saying more than enough. If I give you the inside information of a stock market, next day, information should be inside. Next day you are a millionaire. If you invest according to that, and there are a lot of news, a lot of millionaires floating around, due to summer caught, some are not caught. But the inside information was useful. In spirituality, this is the Bhagavad Gita is the inside information. Because there's a lot of culture floating around. And sometimes you wonder, should I do this? Should I do this? Should I do this? Different types of temples, deity, and all that big humongous establishment in religion. But Bhagavad Gita says, you are the temple. Start with you. I am seated in your heart, Lord Krishna says. Chapter 15, verse 15. I am seated in your heart. So your body is a temple. Now this is the inside information. Usually we don't believe that. So if I know this, that my body is a temple. So now I should take care of it. So all my food habits, thinking habits, vocal ability, what language I use when I interact with people, do I treat people as a temple also? First of all, I have to reinvent myself that I am the temple. So. I should readjust, readjust my resources and try to treat as a temple. Temple means the eyewitness. 
hybrid man. You are being photographed, you are being videographed all the time because he is seated here. But we don't believe it. We do bad things, thinking profoundly that nobody is looking at. And we do this. Our minds have been reconditioned, we have been taught, and we have been living that way. And now we have to recondition it. We have to rewind it. It requires effort, commitment, dedication, perseverance. Otherwise, it will never happen. It will never happen otherwise. So what to do? What to do? Bhagavad Gita says, you are unique. Your journey on this planet is unique. Have you ever felt you have, everybody has traveled, right? When you are in the plane, when they say that plane is at 39 feet high, you can unbuckle yourself, you can move around. Ever, ever, a thought came to your mind that what is happening downstairs? If you look, at, look through the window, all fights, all wars, all temples, all mosques, all churches, all synagogues, get them downstairs. You look through the window. But when you are traveling, you are in the neutral zone. You are not affected. Your mind is fresh. But the moment you land, everything comes with vengeance. If you are in a, on a vacation, okay there. But when you come back, everything comes back. Pressure. A lot of pressure, a lot of tension. So the, in, the idea I want to infuse in your mind is that your journey is alone. We come alone, we go alone. And it's not a pessimistic thought. You know, when you don't know anything, there is a fear. But if you know it, fear evaporates. And the best example is swimming. If you don't know swimming, water is your enemy. If I take you at the edge of the water and you don't know swimming, you know what happens. And if you know swimming, water is your friend. Because the fear is gone. Fear is gone. It is the fear. Fear. So this, is, this will uplift the fear from your mind that my journey is alone, I came alone, I have to go alone. And it is not a pessimistic thought. It is an active thought. Active thought. So now I have to understand this, what it means. Because there are abstract statements in all philosophies. But that abstract knowledge must be applied on a daily basis. Otherwise it is useless. It is a gossip. So, now I understand that my journey is alone. I came alone, I will go alone. So now, what is my mission? Why I am here? We work so hard, right? Primary school, high school, middle school, colleges, postgraduate, professional degrees, and in offices, evaluations and citations, and all that goes on and on and on and on. I acquire home, I get married, children, wife, and then I am involved in their uplifting my children, they should get the best education. So everything goes on. And it never ends. But then the final call comes. Final call comes. Okay, please come up now. Enough is enough. And then we leave everything. So does not it look like a drama? If, if you, I mean, slow down, and what I said just now, review that, it looks like a drama. I work so hard. I, entire my life, I said this is mine. This is my car, my wife, my home. I use the stem of I-ness and mine-ness and I created a network of I-ness. Humongous, huge network. 
And one day the final call comes, and I go. So, philosophically, it looks like a drama, because I leave there, everything there. Children, wife, God, houses, relatives, best friends, best enemies, everybody. So, I must digest this idea that if everything is going to be zeroed out at the end of the day, what are the credentials? What is the information coming out of Srimad Bhagavad Gita, which is the inside information that I can carry with me? Because it's a journey. Journey means temporary space. You go on vacation, you don't invest anything. You just enjoy. When you come back, you start investing or disposing of certain assets, like if you are in stocks. The idea is to adjust my when I am young, when I have the energy, the resources, the capability and ability, my mind is working at optimum level to digest this information and change myself. That is what she will do. And to do that, you don't have to buy anything from anybody. All the resources Lord Krishna has provided, all, and they are all free. They are committing sin, people who are charging for meditation or yoga classes. It should be free. It should be free. Lord Krishna gave this wisdom, and he didn't charge anything to Arjuna. Arjuna didn't use any credit card. <laughs> the information is free. When God gave the information free, who are the weak, petty people committing sins in the name of meditation, the yoga, and charging people? You give them free. It is free. But they don't do that. But the idea I am sharing with you that this information is free. Meditation is free. We have all the resources in our body. And we can use them. Now the, the problem is we don't know how to tap those resources. That is our problem. You have Millions of dollars in your locker. No. But you forgot your password. Or you lost your key. They are there. You know it is there. But you can't open it. This is exactly happening to the mankind. There are few people, blessed, sharp, dedicated, committed, Jinko Mahatma Kathyo, Saint Kathyo, the best businessmen, the best scientists. They knew it, they tapped the resources in time, and in time they gave back a lot of information to all of us. Newton came up with three Newton's law, gravitational law, right? There were many scientists before that, that it was Newton, Edison. He gave so much variety of different type of scientific, authenticated information, the life became blessing. It was not like that. So, people who tap those resources, which are within us, not only they excel, they make the society better. They make the creation better. And the wisdom of Bhagavad Gita is, before we leave this planet, make this creation better in whatever way you can. That is the mission of life. And that will go with us. In a very subtle form, it will be on a subtle chip. It will be written, which you will carry as an impression on your soul. And when we will take rebirth, in the prospective mother's womb, that chip will be there and you will be far ahead 
depending upon the quality of the program you have written on that. So this is the golden opportunity. We are all programmers and we write program on a daily basis. Quality of the program, the language, the thoughts you are putting on that. As a programmer, it is my responsibility. So what type of program I am writing on a daily basis? Daily basis. Daily means that is what you are. If once a while you give million dollars and you are not doing anything on a daily basis, that is not the charity. Give one dollar every day because that will change you. Giving one million dollars once a while, that is not your habit, that you are not. So do on a daily basis. Give a glass of water to a thirsty person on a daily basis. There are a lot of soup kitchens. There are a lot of charity work. There's a lot of things going on. Invest in that. Invest in that. But that requires sacrifice. Sacrifice. Bhagavad Gita gives you the wisdom to do like that. This is okay the way we are living. But invest in that investment which will bring a lot of dividends. Our activities will not bring any dividends. They will be zeroed out. They will be zeroed out. And you have seen that the mightiest, the brightest, the most beautiful, the most ugly, the most advanced, they all vanish, leaving behind everything. But people in chapter 15, there are a couple of verses which supports this thinking that this type of investment will go with you. Definitely will go with you. It's a divine warranty. Nobody else is giving you the warranty. It's the Lord Krishna's warranty. And I said before also, we believe in, in Sears warranty when you buy this small appliance. We believe that. When we, then we get three years or four years extended warranty and we are happy that we are covered. But this is the divine warranty coming out of Lord Krishna. Why don't we believe that? He is the creator, original warranty, divine warranty. But I should infuse faith in that, that this will work. And it works, time tested, millions have tried. It worked. Nobody has changed. It worked. So it will work for us also. So let us reinvent ourselves in this Bhagavad Gita class. That I have to invest on a daily basis certain ideas with perseverance, with dedication, commitment that this has to be done. This has to be done. And divine warranty is, Lord Krishna says, such a person, such an entity is most near and dear to me who does that, who does that on a daily basis. So Bhagavad Gita, we, are, we have not touched anything in depth, but I am giving you the, uh, what it is, you know, what, what a miracle. We are blessed as the Indians, being Hindus, because we were there. We were there. If we were not there, our forefathers were there. So, take, it, it's like a marathon. Your starting point is 100 meters ahead of me. I have to start from here, you have your starting from here. So who will win? You. <laughs> because you are starting 100 meters ahead of me. It is the same type of thinking. Invest in that. So every day, before you go to sleep, try to digest one slope's information, one verse information. What it means. But don't read at a book. Try to see what is the wisdom, what is the applicability, why is he saying like that. 
So that will change us. Once we change, our investment portfolio changes. You start investing in different portfolios, diversified. The same language, stock market. What is the stock market? What is the stock market? People who have the information inside, their investment portfolio is very strong. People who don't know the technique, they also invest. But today they are booming, tomorrow they are doomed because they don't know. So, Bhagavad Gita gives you the wisdom of three pillars of thoughts. And one is the technique of karma. Karma. One is the technique of devotion bhakti. One is the technique of knowledge, jnana. There are three types of people in this whole populace. Extroverted, introverted, and neutral. So now see your mental setup. Are you extroverted? Because you are the judge, you are the jury, you are the defense, you are the prosecutor. You know who you are. I can't. You know it. So try to invent yourself or reinvent yourself. Am I extroverted or introverted? Or I am neutral? So depending upon what you are, these are the three choices. If you believe, profoundly believe, after this reinvention, that you are extroverted, the best course to reinvent yourself is to invest in the karmic philosophy, the law of karma. Master that. People who are introverted, I will give you the definitions later on. People who are introverted, the best course for them is jnana yoga, the yoga of knowledge, to digest the information, and then share it with the society. This go in olden days, they used to call it Brahmin. Brahmin means people who will go to universities, colleges, and their only purpose is to digest the information. And then they become brilliant professors. That was their mission. But nowadays it is a business. Whether I like it or don't like it, I go to college just to earn that this will give you more money. That is what we are doing these days. And that is why there is a lot of unrest, emotional unrest. You are doing the job, but you are not satisfied. Because you are not that, and you are doing this. That is the root cause of our unrest. We are not peaceful. We are agitated, excited all the time. And we are, when we are excited and agitated, our interpersonal, intrapersonal relationship deteriorates. Relationship at home, with wife, spouse, both sides, they are tense. They are living, they are living together, but that living is not the way of living. People who are living together, I said many times, the relationship should be divine. A picture I think, I think you might have seen. There was one movie, and this was one of the theme songs. Do you believe that? Kisi ko apni wife ki aankho mein vaisa vaisa rab dikhta hai ke nahi dikhta? Nahi dikhta. The song is very good. So spiritually we have we are suffering from spiritual cataract. Spiritual cataract. Hame pata hai. 
क्योंकि सॉन्ग कह रहा है कि दिख, दिखना चाहिए वी नेवर पुट एनी टाइम और इन्वेस्टमेंट टू अप्लाई दिस सिंपल लॉ कि तुझ में रब दिखता है यार मैं क्या करूं एंड दिस इज भगवत गीता द पर्सन हु रोड दिस सॉन्ग he wrote this song in the third or fourth stage of his mind when he was writing because otherwise such thought does not come but we hear this song and we say wow hum jhumte bhi hain but we don't apply what a human tragedy and our home is a workshop it is a workshop we go to various workshops professionally and otherwise religious and they claim they give you some little certification that you attended this workshop this is the workshop bhagavad gita says your home is a workshop attend this attend this we don't do that we are suffering heavily suffering because the day the time you go, go out of your home you are agitated excited every day and when you sit in the car there is a the road rage you are driving but you are not driving you are under pressure if you are the supervisor or the manager since you are excited and agitated you give hard time to the staff because you are agitated the moment anybody tries to come into your cubicle he will be lucky if he goes pleased does not work does not work so bhagavad gita says slow down reinvent yourself there is nothing wrong with us it is only because we don't we we lost the technique to tap this resource so this is this is the information ki mujh tujh mein rab dikhta hai wo dikhna chahiye agar nahi dikhta to i should reinvent myself what is wrong but we don't try we take it for granted ye to aise hi chalega aise hi chalega if the money is involved if they say your promotion is tagged to the relationship to your wife it has to be peaceful you will get 50000 dollars every year everybody will start doing that but there is no money in war that is what we are making big mistake bhagavad gita wants you to reinvent yourself there is one life to live according to karmic philosophy you will be recycled million times but each time we come the information is same digest it until i digest it i have to come back and there is no warranty or guarantee that once we die we will be back as a human being that is why they say this is a golden opportunity we become snake we become small little creature whose life is only 1 minute 8.4 million evolutions are there and we passes through them to the law of evolution 8.4 million so 8.4 million chances after that we are what we are now to we kehte hain ki manush joni jo hai ye golden opportunity i try to give the background that it i came through 8.4 million evolutions to become this and all of us so now i should behave like that i should not behave like a snake i should not behave like a pig i should not behave like a crow i should not behave like a lion i should not be, i should behave like a supreme human being my standard should be very high the bar should be very high under this thinking that this is golden opportunity it is now or never so bhagavad gita gives you a head start 
and do this, to do this. And the third category, which I said neutral, one is extroverted people who wants to go out. Those are called extroverted. Agar aapko kaho ke ghar bato, you want to go out to touch people, to stay in the society. Those are extroverted people. And they are full of energy. And for best course to get this right is through the law of karma. Do the best karma on a daily basis. You will get the same result. And what are the best karmas? Do for others. Become selfless. When you are selfish, you are in the box. When you are selfless, you are out of the box. Windows open. Your extension is all around. I become your extension. You become my projection. I start seeing myself in you through this technique of karma. But I have to practice it. If I do that, I will never have jealousy about you. Because you are my extension. You are my protection. Nobody does harm to himself or herself. We do harm to others, thinking that they are others. But if I believe profoundly that you are me, you are my protection, then how can I do harm to you? My thinking will change. My thinking will change. So, Bhagavad Gita, if you have this type of bent of mind, Karma Yoga is the best. Do selfless karma and change the life of others also. If you are intelligent, share the intelligence, how you became intelligent. If you are healthy, share the information, don't hold it. Share the information, sir, I did that, you also should do that. If you are intellectual, you understood, if you have more information, share that information. Don't hold it. Don't become egocentric, egomanian, that I know you don't know. No. Under this concept, you have to share it. And the beauty of creational law is, the more you share what you have, the more you get it back. The more you get it back. In the worldly laws, if I give you money on a daily basis, my money will deplete. If I am giving you something out of my saving and continue to give you, my saving will be depleting. But in spirituality, your savings or spiritual thoughts, the more you share, the more you get back. It is the reverse. It is the reverse law. So, under this concept, if you are extroverted, go and touch and people and change them. And while doing that, you will change yourself. And, and that way, the, the same benefit you will get, people who are doing through the yoga of knowledge or the yoga of devotion. People who are introverted. Introverted means they don't want to go out. You have seen in your friendly circle. Unko kaho bhi. It may be your wife, your brother, your best friend. They are happy in their home. They don't want to go out. So they are introverted. So what is best for them? Introverted people are good to tap the resources of gyan. They are, they, they are consuming information. They don't want to go out, but they can consume a lot of information. They are stable inside. They can get and digest a lot of information. And through gyan, when they get it, they share it later on. 
and people who are neutral. Neutral means emotional, very emotional. Choti si baat, kisi ki bhi, they will start crying. Practically, emotions, for them, devotion is the best, bhakti yoga is the best. Bhakti yoga is the best, devotion. Because bhakti means bhav. Bhav, aapka vichar kya hai? Koi bhi chee jab aap karte ho. Whatever you do, what is the thought behind that? That is the bhakti. If you understand that whatever I am doing, it is for Lord Krishna. That is for bhakti. When, but when you have this spirit thought that whatever I am doing, I am doing for Lord Krishna, the quality of your performance will increase. You will be working at an optimum level because you are doing something for the bosses of the bosses. The performance will be at peak through this technique that whatever I do, I am doing for Lord Krishna. If I am eating, I am eating not for this skeleton. I am eating for Lord Krishna. He is seated here. So he should get the best food. Not me, not my body. He is sitting here. So I am eating for him. So the food will become prasad. This whole it changes. And you will have think hundred times what I am eating. Whereas you are not eating for yourself, you are eating for Lord Krishna. If I am going to my job, job is a job. I will be doing the job for Lord Krishna. The quality of my performance will far exceed. I will not fool around because I know he is watching me and I am doing for him. He will give me the right certificate. The performance, the quality, the thinking will change. We will be doing the same thing. Driving under this concept. If I know I am driving for Lord Krishna. Suppose Guruji, Acharya Ji, Jinka Ji institution. He is sitting with you on the front seat, on the passenger side, and you are the driver. You are taking him to some religious place. How you will drive? Just I am asking. Acharya is sitting next to you. How you will drive? This is a lot of caution. This is a right of way. This is a right of way. Stable driving. Right? This is how the thinking changes. This is how the, so, if you profoundly believe and practice on a daily basis when you sit in the car, then next to me is, is Lord Krishna is sitting. And I am driving. So see your performance under this concept of bhakti. Because bhakti means jo chuda hua hai, connected hai, all the time. We bhakti nahi hai, divided nahi hai. Whatever he or she is doing persistently, continuously, daily basis, he or she is doing for the Creator, Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is a name. Maybe Lord Rama, Lord Shiva, Lord Hanuma, or whatever Akka is today, Jovi. So, this is how Bhagavad Gita changes us on a daily basis. So, under these three rules, you select yourself and then change. That is the wisdom of Sri Bhagavad Gita. But the nitty gritty is on a daily basis what I do. Anything, I share this information before also. Anything and everything we do on a daily basis for six months with perseverance, dedication.
commitment to do it right, six months, that will become your reflex, your habit. Driving is our reflex now. We talk, we eat, we conversation going on, you listen to the radio, you read the directions, but car is driving. You are not putting any extra effort. But there was one time when driving was like it, the most fearful act of your life. The first time you went on the highway, you know the everybody has that. So the idea is to make the life fearless. Fearless. If you are under the element of fear, your performance is 50% compromised. So Bhagavad Gita gives you information. That information should be digested. When it is digested, it becomes jnana. It becomes knowledge. Information, when it is digested at your own level, it becomes knowledge. And hence you have the knowledge, you are fearless. You are fearless. But only information will not work because you are still fearful. You have not tested that information. You have not digested that information. You have not used that information. Do we have time? About uh, five minutes. Yeah, so five. we will wrap it up. We will continue in our next session. So, Bhagavad Gita is a class of awareness. Almighty God gave me the opportunity and I am sharing these thoughts. These are not my thoughts. I am just sharing with you the wisdom. The idea is to change. To change, this is the golden opportunity. It is now or never. I tell you, don't wait for tomorrow. Whatever I gave you the classification and categorization, use it, that information, and at your own level in small things, change it, change it. Stay peaceful, stay relaxed, but that will not happen until you do these things. Try to improve the intrapersonal, interpersonal relationship. The unit which we call family, it is a divine union. It is not your choice. Use that opportunity. There is 7.3 billion people on this planet. So much crowded. So if, if in the home, husband and wife and two kids, that is what we call family. Brothers and sisters, you don't include these days because we have become very wise. You know? Sisters are not included, parents are not included, both sides. It is you, your wife, and two kids. That is your family. Make that family a heaven now. Is a choti entity kya ho sakti? 7.3 billion log ki bheed me, aap chaar log ki ho. Think that way. बहुत बड़ा मेला लगा हुआ हो, कार्निवाल है। You, your husband, and two kids, you are holding hands, and it is crowded, right? You take care of yourself also. Do you leave the hand of your wife or your kids because it is crowded? No. You use the same concept. Do you have a body bigger? ये जो चार लोग इकट्ठे आप बैठे हुए हो, it is a divine plan. फिर ये अपॉर्चुनिटी मिलेगी नहीं, फिर अगर हस्बैंड चला गया तो वो कभी नहीं मिलेगा, वाइफ चली गई तो वो कभी नहीं मिलेगी। अगर किसी ने मिला ही नहीं है, तो गोल्डन अपॉर्चुनिटी अभी है। तभी वो कहते हैं कि सात जन्मों का वो कहते हैं, right? We say this on a lighter note. सात जन्मों का मतलब है जिन्होंने डिवाइन वे से अपना जीवन बिताया है उनको अपॉर्चुनिटी मिल सकती है बिकॉज़ दे आर सो टच टू ईच अदर 
उनको अपॉर्चुनिटी मिल सकती है दी वे वी आर लिविंग हमें तो एक घंटे की भी नहीं मिलेगी बिकॉज वी डिंट लिव एंड वी लिव ऑन दिस प्लेनेट सेवेंटी एटी नाइन्टी ईयर्स एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम नाइन्टी परसेंट इट वॉज मिसअंडरस्टैंडिंग लेट इट गो इम्प्रूव दैट इज दिजडम ऑफ अवेदी का जय श्री कृष्ण